Now for this part of the question, we're told then that we've got these three forces, F1, F2 and F3, which are given by these various vectors where we have I and J components. I say is horizontal and J is vertically upwards. Not that that really matters, to be honest, in doing this question. We're told that these forces then act on a particle P and that P is an equilibrium. And we've got to find out what the values of P and Q are. Well, if you've got a particle that's in equilibrium, that's stationary, then the resultant of these three forces must equal zero. And because we're working with vectors, we can say that if we were to sum these vectors, in other words, do F1 plus F2 plus F3, then what would we expect that result to be? Well, it would be the null vector. We tend to write this as a bold zero, or if we can't do that, we can do a squiggle underneath it. The null vector is 0i plus 0j. So we've got no resultant force acting on the particle. So it's easy now because all we need to do is just add up our three vectors and equate it to this null vector. So if we add these vectors, it's the same as adding the i components and adding the j components. So if we add the i components, we've got 7 plus 5, which is 12, plus the p. All of that is in the i direction. So we could write this as 12 plus p in the i direction. And when it comes to the j direction, we've got minus 9 plus 6, which is minus 3, plus q, or q minus 3. So we could write this as plus q minus 3, all in the j direction. And this is equal to this null vector. And the null vector then is 0 in the i direction, followed by 0 in the j direction. Now that we've got this, we can compare components. We can equate them, if you like. So if we compare components, that is, we compare the i components with one another, and the J components. So looking at the I components, what we have is that 12 plus P must be equal to the zero. So 12 plus P must equal zero. And it follows from this result that if we take 12 from both sides, it follows that P must equal minus 12. If we were to do the same for the J components, let's just put J there, then we've got Q minus 3 must equal the 0 here. So Q minus 3 equals the 0. And if we add 3 to both sides, we therefore get that Q equals 3. So that's essentially it. What we could do, though, is just carry this on, just a little bit of practice, just to give you an overview of what's going on. We've essentially got this particle then, okay, let's just imagine this is our particle P. And it's acted upon by these forces then, 7i minus 9j. What would that look like? Well, if we had i, say, as a vector like this going horizontally and j as a unit vector going up, okay, hope you can see that. Just try and keep it small though. 7i minus 9j would be 7 units out this way, 9 units down. So we've got something looking like this, a force going down like that. That would be F1. It's not drawn to scale, but as I say, it's just to give you an idea. F2, what would that look like? Let's just do it in another colour. Do it in green. 5i plus 6j, that would be 5 units out this way and 6 units up. It's going to be a force looking something like that, maybe. That would be F2. Now, you can clearly see that on this particle, this particle would want to move somewhere out in this direction if you had these two forces acting on it. So you'd need another force to pull it back in this direction, okay? And that's going to be F3. It turns out that F3 is 
minus 12 in the i direction, so that's going to be out there, and three units up. If I did that in blue, it's going to look something like that, F3. And what you should also know, just as a bit of revision here, that these three vectors should form a closed triangle. And that's why if we were to do, say, F1, let's just mark it in here, let's just say we start there and we do F1, something like that. And we follow it with, say, F2. F2 would come from here, up there, something like that. F2. And then F3 would take you back to there. And the resultant of these is our null vector, because we come back to exactly this point here where we started. So I hope it's given you some extra overview of what's going on here. OK, well, there you go. P was minus 12 then, and Q was 3, just by comparing the components.